Oh, wait. Never mind. That does sound like him. So the Dread Wolf goes to Mathal. They might be fighting, but they have history. And he warns her about the other god using the blight. That's more important than his rebellion. But he also but said it was their mistake. Together when an archdemon rises. Mithal didn't think it was possible. She said the blight was sealed away. There's an old legend about it. Davrin, the one with Andruel's armor. Not sure it matters. We're deep in elven lore already. What's the legend say? Right. Well, Andruel was the goddess of the hunt. She put on armor, magic armor, made of something called the Void. Drove her mad. I remember this one. The other gods were afraid Andruel would turn on them. She was doing all kinds of horrible things, causing plagues. It does sound like the Blight. Well, it all ends with Mithal fighting Andruel. After, Mithal turned into a dragon. She what? Why didn't you start with that? Anyway, she took Andruel's armor away. Then Andruel's madness left, and peace returned. Intriguing. So it's possible Andruel stumbled onto the magic of the Blight. And when Andruel went mad, Mithal took it from her and locked it away. Until someone started using it again. Hmm. The Blight's one of the only things that really scares Solus. He came to Mithal afraid. And she took it seriously, too. So Mithal goes off to investigate what Solus says. Then, what? It's too clean. Seems plenty messy with them doing it. But this isn't just a memory. <laughs> it's something Solus wanted to hide. What's the crime? What did we see here that he feels guilty about? I think I might know. When the Inquisitor was saving the world from the breach, she met Mithal. What? Like, in a dream? It was complicated. She helped the Inquisition. There was a magic pond and a dragon. Nice! The point is, she also said the other elven gods betrayed her. Killed her. Okay, sorry. Point of order. If they killed Mithal, how was she still around to help the Inquisition? Elven god magic? She'd spent centuries gathering strength and sharing people's bodies, I think. If it was a truly benign possession, that speaks to her character. Mm. Solus tried to do the right thing by warning Mithal about the other gods using the Blight, but he got her killed. Well, it's not just that she died. What do you mean, Tosh? It's... Ugh. There was stuff he wanted to tell her. But he waited too long, and then she was dead. He never got to make it right. That twists you up. That's it. There's our crime. Doesn't really tell us anything we can use, though. We know more than we did. That's something. True. Well, I guess we keep our eyes open if we come across more of these memories. Oh, I, okay. Didn't realize we had more. You dare to try to cage us, jealous of our growing power. You will pay the final price for this betrayal. We warned you not to use the blight. For this and for Mathol. I sentence you to sleep in exile ever after. Your own lives will form the veil that keeps the horror you unleashed at bay. Okay. So he locked the gods away and created a veil between this world and the Fade. I mean, they were terrible, no question. But what he did, it didn't just stop them. It destroyed our culture, our world. It wasn't just to stop them. It was to stop the Blight. We've seen how bad Elganon and Gilanane are. Imagine all seven corrupted gods running wild. So he created the veil just to keep the elven gods locked in their prison? Yes, to keep them from accessing the Fade, but 
Was the creation of the Vale around the world an accident? You heard him yelling. That's not the sound of a ritual going right. What do you think, Rook? Hmm. Davern and I have fought the Blight for years. It's terrifying. Watching the gods poison his world, his people, I understand why Solus would do anything to stop it. I know, Rook. I I'm not denying that. I just... I wish there'd been a better way. That's all. So does he. This isn't a memory he's proud of. I had another question, and... I'm sorry, maybe this doesn't matter, but... Solus trapped the Blighted Gods in an ancient elven building, right? That's what it looks like. Maybe a palace? Fancier than what I've seen in Arlathan, at least. And then, the Magisters were lured into the Fade. They broke in, which let the Blight escape, and turned the Golden City black. Right, and the Black City hangs in the Fade, a little reminder of their mistakes. What's wrong, Lace? It's just... The Chant of Light says that the Maker built for them the Golden City, the center of all creation. But if the Golden City was an ancient elven palace, then the Maker didn't build it. The elves did. The Chant of Light is Andraste's visions from the Maker, but it sounds like it's... wrong. You're asking if we just disproved the entire Andrastean faith. Did we? Hmm. Lace, I don't think you'll ever fully know whether the Chant of Light is literally true or not. What matters is that in its better moments, the Chantry encourages people to be kind and help each other. What do we tell the Chantry about this? Do we tell them about this? People are already questioning because of Algonan and Gilanane. It hasn't stopped them believing. I guess people need that comfort. Even if some parts of it aren't totally true. The Dalish clans are struggling. That seems like a question thing. for once we, if we, we survive all this, you know? What do we lose? The Elven Gods, the Maker. No matter who you light a candle to, you've got some hard questions to ask yourself right now. Doctrine is not the truth, it is one of many paths to the truth. I recognize the sentiment, though not the specific quote. Who said that? My mother. Ah. Oh. Questions of faith aside. We have some very real gods that still need killing. Looks like there are three more of these murals with the Dreadwolf's old memories. Wonder what else he's hiding. Do I have any more? I guess I do. I suppose I needed the first one from uh, the Inquisitor before I was able to use the rest. You have so long observed the world. Why not consider joining it? But I have no desire to live as humans. I have the Fade. Besides this talk of taking on a solid form, I think you underestimate the danger. When you took the glowing stone to build your body, did the earth not shake? Valyrium gives us the strength we had when we were of the Fade. We are the best of physical and spirit. I need your wisdom, Solus. To withstand the louder voices who would go too far like Elganon. I need you. This is madness. You must know that. I will always follow where you go. This is astounding. The ancient elves were spirits who voluntarily manifested a physical form. I'd rather go back to talking about the Blight. <laughs> hey, Lucanus, could Spite turn into an elf? No. Sorry, but... what? 
Hmm. This puts all of elven history in a new light, not to mention what we think about spirits. I mean, some magic works differently for elves. If we came from spirits, that'd explain it. The knowledge that an entire people were formed from a mass manifestation could change our entire understanding of magic. If we let it out, is that the right call? Do you want bigoted humans yelling about how elves are demons? Davern's got a point. World's not short on small-minded humans. Hmm. I don't think people will care right now. We've got evil gods trying to destroy the world. Evil elven blighted gods. True. Don't yeah. forget. We have to tell someone, though. Strife and Irulan, at least. If I told Thea and Viago, they'd think I was sampling Viago's poison collection. No one would believe us. Okay. We keep this to people we trust who have good reason to know. No shouting it from the rooftops. Agreed. The Morn Watch has a great deal of experience keeping dangerous secrets. So, beyond the world shaking stuff, what else did we learn here? Solus himself was a spirit. What kind do you think he was? Well, his name is Elvin for pride. Oh, okay. There's something else. Not about spirits, or not all about them at least. Solus didn't want to become a person with a physical body. Right. He only agreed after Mathal begged him. Then that's his regret. He wishes he'd never taken physical form. Maybe, but not just that. Solus was scared. They built their bodies out of lyrium, and it made the ground shake. Hmm. You think the ground shaking was the Titans? It makes sense, doesn't it? Something was hurting them, taking their blood. So they struck back, like we'd swat a stinging bug. The first memory we saw with Elganon seizing power, it happened at the end of a war. A war between the Titans and the Elves. And we just saw how it started. It feels like we still don't have the full picture. But I think that's part of what Solus regrets. He didn't see the danger. Except he did. He was worried. You said it yourself. He did it for Mithal. Everything that followed, he could have prevented if he just told her no. Then he's got a war on his conscience. Plus, whatever we find next. More? Oh. Oh, the dagger. Have you created what we need? With this, the proper ritual will sunder every titan from its spirit. But you must know those severed dreams will certainly be driven mad. A disembodied blight of pain and anger. It is awful. What we're doing. And the only way to end this war. Solus made the weapon that killed the Titans. No, not killed. He cut away their dreams. That's why dwarves and don't left dream. Them broken and mindless. He passed me in the halls of Skyhold for a year. He made polite conversation, and he knew. He knew what he did. Oh yeah, I'm pissed off on the half of dwarves. He spent so much time talking about how sad he was for what he'd done to the elves. They'd lost their immortality because of him. They'd lost their empire because of him. My people can't dream. Nobody but Harding even knows what it's like. He took that from us. From me. I'm sorry. You didn't do it. Our leaders attacked the Titans for their lyrium. Then, when the war turned against the elves, our leaders did this. And when the war was over, they enslaved your ancestors. 
No. Solus, Mithal, and Elgernon are the ones who need to apologize. To do such a thing? No wonder regret eats away at Solus. No, it's worse than that. That isn't what Solus regrets. Those severed dreams will be driven mad. A disembodied blight of pain and anger. Mirda. You can't. That's not possible. When a warden hears the calling, it's like a song in their mind. Sound familiar to you, Lace? The song of Lyrium. Of the Titans. We think of the Blight as this monstrous force with no mercy, no compassion. Evil incarnate. Instead, it's a caged animal. Mistreated and imprisoned for centuries. Until all it knows is fear. Hmm. Oh, this is a special Grey Warden and Dwarven background. All these years fighting Darkspawn and the Grey Wardens, and I've been fighting my own dreams. I don't believe so. If the Blight is a corrupted dream, Darkspawn may be mindless manifestations of its anger. Right. They're not people. We're never going to get through to them. The Titans are a problem for later. We have Elgernon and Gilanane to deal with now. And then I want Solus to look me in the eye and answer for what he did. Each of these memories has been a deeper regret, and almost all of them involve Mithal. Only one mural left to uncover by my count. If we find it, we'll see what's worse than this. I think I have to defeat that dragon to get the last one. Unless I don't think we already have it. Oh no, I do. Okay, super. Oh, I'll just shut up then. Oh, that's Mithal's death. I knew that you would find me soon enough. You need the power of a god. The strength that I alone still carry. The blighted Evanuris will soon break free from their prison. I must make a stronger one that can contain them. While the prison is important, it is not the only goal you seek. Why should I not tear down the veil and bring back immortality to all the elven people? They deserve it. The elven people of today do not deserve to see the world they love be torn apart to salve your conscience. I must fix what I have broken. I am sorry. As am I, old friend. Wait, did he use the last of her essence to make a new prison? Solus killed Mithal? After all that? Is this another memory from a different time? No. He wore that same outfit in the Inquisition. We knew Solus woke up in this world without most of his power. Now we know how he got it back. By killing the only other god around. And stealing her power all that epic magic and godly power in the end it comes down to love and murder same as always so we've got all the dread wolf's deep dark secrets anything we can use he's being honest about fighting the blight whatever happens he won't risk letting it back out into the world Agreed, but he has a plan to escape that prison, and not one we'll like. He turned on Mithal, the one person he was actually loyal to. There's no way he won't turn on us. Mm -hmm. He's a spirit, or was once. He might be able to possess someone, affect minds, all the things spirits do. He created the veil. His very nature is tied to it. That will be a source of strength, but also a potential weakness. Mithal has them all messed up. Anything about her or Elgernon is going to make him angry. Sloppy. Solus thinks he knows what's best for everyone. Anything he does, he'll do while telling himself he's the hero. That gives us something to start from. Elgernon and Gilanane are the two big problems right now, but when Solus makes his move, we'll be ready. have witnessed the Protector's tale, Dweller, almost to its end. Almost? How can there be more? When the mighty
mighty fall, their echoes cross the ages. An audience is warranted. Speak with your visitor. She awaits you in the crossroads. Okay. Big approval with everybody. I'm gonna go to the lighthouse first. Oh, sorry, the crossroads, not directly to Vice Out. Oh, it's Morgan. Well met, Rook. How did you get here? I did tell you I had my ways through Alluvians when I introduced you to the Inquisitor, did I not? The Alluvians in general, yes, but not the Dread Wolf's crossroads. I would think you have more pressing questions at the moment. Questions about Solus and Mathal? Mathal? The two gods have always been linked, have they not? First, when Mithal bade her companion spirit to abandon the Fade and take on mortal form. Then, when Solus spilled Mithal's mortal blood, that he might absorb her power as his own. Wait. How do you know exactly what we saw of Solus's past? Think upon it, Rook. You saw for yourself in the Dread Wolf's memories. When Mithal stood against the gods' manipulations of the Blight, she was betrayed and struck down. Yet she survived and returned ages later to aid the Inquisition in its hour of need. How? Talking about spirits? So, if Mithal was originally a spirit, maybe that's how she survived her body's death. Very good. Mithal was a spirit turned elven. And when her body was struck down to spirit, she returned. Her essence sheltered in a willing mortal vessel. Over the centuries, she journeyed from host to host, slowly amassing her former power anew. Until once again, she was struck down, on this occasion, by Solus. He absorbed her power, but not her memories. Then why did they... wait. You. As you say. Yeah, how complicated with this guy? Assuming you are who you say you are, how much is a fourth elven god going to complicate things? Only as much as you may allow. What? That was like how Elganon and Gilanane can talk in your head, but. Twas Mathal you heard, her echoes. Yet, I am not the goddess returned. What are you, then? I once feared Mathal would consume me were I to carry her, but was not so. I remain free-willed and mortal. What I now possess is but a spark of Mathal, shadowed memories through which to sift for meaning. As to our admixture, I suspect you have questions? Hmm. <laughs> You would have met Solus in the Inquisition, right? I did indeed. Twas before I possessed Mithal's memories. At the time, I thought Solus a scowling elven apostate whose sole passion was finding arguments. He heard me, in all my ignorance, expound on the histories of the elven people, explaining legends he had witnessed himself. Bet he loved that. Tis not a memory that brings me pride. Do you have information we can use against Gilanane or Elganon, or Solus? The last time Mathal faced Elganon and Gilanane, she was struck down by the very dagger you now carry. What about Solus? You may recall he murdered Mathal's former host to claim her godly might as his own. I hoard no untapped magical secrets, Rook. What I do possess, I share freely with you and the Veil Jumpers. All right. So, there's the soul of an elven god inside you. How does that even happen? 
Mathal's last host was my mother, Flemeth. Oh. When I learned she intended me to become the next receptacle of an ancient god's soul, I feared naught would be left of my own. It inevitably came to pass on a deep night. I was awakened by the presence of a blaze of magic in the shape of a woman who both was and was not my mother. Hmm. Sounds weird. Yep. This isn't the strangest thing I've heard, but it's close. It is difficult to describe, even now. Mathal's memories were both gift and burden, this blazing woman told me. But I must accept them of my own accord. The decision was paralyzing. What would it mean to become such a host? What would be lost if I refused? In the end, it was something in my mother's voice which guided me. What was that? Regret. Not the regret of a god, but of a mother who knew she would never see me again. And so, my mind remains my own. What I gained was knowledge, both Mathal's and of those who bore her. How can you carry Mathal's soul if you're not an elf? Her spark has sheltered within both elves and humans who were sympathetic to her in thought and circumstance. Mathal's last host was a woman wronged, trapped by those sworn to love her. We may readily imagine their kinship. Hmm. You didn't come out here just to tell me you're Mithal. I am not Mithal in her entirety, but yes. The Dreadwolf has occasion to visit you in dreams, where he portions out advice. And now, after finding his memories, you have peered into his deepest sorrows. Tell me then, what do you make of Solus? Hmm. I should ask you. Mithal knew Solus better than anyone. I would influence your answer. Or do you mean to discover if I would stand directly against the Dread Wolf were there a need? Would you? I shall aid you in any way but that, even had I the power. What has passed between Solus and Mithal? I beg you, do not ask this of me again. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, Solus killed the Titans, destroyed the ancient elves, and wants to ruin this world to bring back his old one. But he'll always make sure you hear just how sad he is about all the murder. If that is how you see him, perhaps the Dread Wolf's words have not served as well as he might wish. I'll say. It is not malice which made Solus your opponent, but conviction. A belief that only he may halt what he set in motion. Yet Solus was once beloved of Mathal. Tis his very loyalty and love for his people that led to the tragedy we now face. You may be in a position to determine how it ends, more so than either of you might realize. Mm. Well, that's not terrifying at all. You have been thrust into the lives of gods. Fate will have its way, whether or without our permission. Even more comforting, Morrigan. If you would shape the outcome of your battle, I've one last secret to share. When Mathal was struck down by the other gods, it was with her own Lyrium dagger, the dagger you now carry. Solus recovered it from Elgonon, and from it extracted a fragment of Mathal that had lain hidden within its depths. This fragment, a younger sister to the one I carry, if you will, resides here, in the crossroads. I can open the way for you, find her, survive the encounter, and the essence you obtain will aid you in times to come. Hmm. Another fragment of Mithal, in addition to the one inside you. You are aware of what the word fragment means, are you not? One yes. small piece of many, formed when something greater is broken. 
The first elves were spirits, as you well know, and when a spirit is broken, it may shatter into pieces, each holding part of the original. Among the ancient elves who became known as gods, Dertherman and his brother, Fallon Dean, are but one example. I'll survive. What do I need to know? You know Solus, and have seen Elganon, and memories of Mathal. They are creatures of emotion, as all spirits are. The fragment of Mathal that resides in me lived among mortals for thousands of years. She has grown wiser and more patient. This younger sister has not. She is the essence of Mathal as a god. She is unlikely to listen to polite requests, and though she is but a fragment of the goddess, the battle will test you sorely. Fun. If she's just going to attack us, why tell us about her at all? We have enough enemies already. A fragment of a god's essence is a powerful thing. It may give you options against Algonan and Gelanane, or against the Dreadwolf himself, should he prove as cunning and treacherous as ever. If I were to try to talk with her, do you have any suggestions? She will demand respect, but detest flattery. She appreciates righteous anger, but will not tolerate pity. She is, for want of better phrasing, prickly. Fun. But if you are determined to try, then I wish you luck. You would know this aspect of Mythal better than anyone. Could you try talking to her? I dare say she would attack me on sight. Spirits can't get along with fragments of each other. Spirits, certainly. But the aspects of a self-righteous god who have walked different paths for ages? One bears the insult of her betrayal by the Evanuris, and then by Solus, as fresh wounds, insult upon injury. The other once fell in love with an Alamari chieftain and lived happily in a swamp for centuries. Each reminds the other that another path existed, that they could have been wrong, and nothing angers Mathal like being wrong. What kind of spirit was Mathal before she became an elf? I know Solus is elven for pride. Mathal enjoyed ruling and having power, but it came not from the overweening desire to crush resistance, as is the case with Algonan. The emotion that inspired her might best be described as benevolence, a guiding hand inclined to kindness. But like any spirit, when angered or twisted against her purpose, a more violent aspect arose. Where the Dreadwolf's wisdom gave way to pride when the world did not meet his standards, Mathal's benevolence gave way to retribution. After all, when kindness fails, the guilty must be punished. Thank you for the information, Morrigan. I only ask that you reflect upon what I have said. The Dreadwolf is not so apart from the world as he thinks. There, you have the advantage of him. Well, that should be a fun fight. But it'll be a fight for the next time we play this game. Right. We made a lot of progress in the story. Uh, I am going to take a momentary break, however, and swap over to playing some Tectonica. Uh, hang on, I've got to find the right save. There we go. Yeah, quickly going to go to the loo, grab another drink, and uh, we'll be back in just a minute with some Tectonica. See you guys in a second. 